So I'm back again with another interview. We're going to do it a little different this time. We're going to do a double interview. Uh, we have Jay right here on the right. He just got here. He's loving it. We're going to ask him about his experience, what motivate him. And then we have a little more experience with the continent of Africa. Scott right here, he's, he used to live in Tanzania too, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to ask him some stuff about that and why he is here and not there. Okay. So, uh, Jay, what made you, what first inspired you to want to come here? Uh, about five years ago, right before COVID hit, uh, I was sitting at one of my favorite, favorite cigar lounges in uh, Freeport, New York, uh, on Order Kamal, and a young lady, young lady, very young lady, she just stopped out of nowhere, and she just opened up on me about visiting Africa, and you must go, and don't believe none of the lies about, you know, everything that they say about it, and just go, and you will have, they love us, they respect us, and visit the continent. So right after that, COVID hit, um, and everything was on lock, and I lost a bunch of family members and people that was real close to me. So um, leading up to me getting here, it was a, a conversation I was having with a few bros, and nobody would really entertain it because most of the brothers would go to DR, Colombia, uh, Costa Rica, you know. And I was like, nah. And I had it in my heart that deep down, Africa was calling me. So, you know, it was at the time they had to hold a year of return to Ghana and come to Ghana. And I was back and forth with COVID. So, you know, watching the internet, watching all the content, uh, it was building me up. And then um, leading up to uh, middle of October, I couldn't take it no more. I said, I got to go. So everything lined up credit cards, you know, a couple of dollars in the bank. And uh, I woke up a Friday morning, like 4.35, and I just I just hit the button. I went to Expedia, went to a couple of websites, booked that Kenya Airways on a Friday, and Wednesday morning, I'm sitting here. Cook Tuesday Eve afternoon flight out of JFK. Do it like everybody else do. Jumped on that Long Island Railroad to the air train. Hassle-free. I walked up to the terminal. It was, it was easy pleasy. Got here. They treated me very good on the plane. Uh, the staff on the plane was magnificent, courteous, soft spoken, very soft spoken people. And when I got off the plane here, it was, it was beautiful. It was just got here, got the sun, seventy five degrees. The weather stays consistent, and um, I don't know what to say from it. I didn't have no idea. I had a one small luggage bag. I had more underwear than socks, drawer, everything else. I just had underwear and two t-shirts. And I said, whatever it is, I'll figure it out when I get to the hotel. So I got to the hotel, the accommodations, the, the, the people was just ultra, ultra understanding. I definitely didn't have my fears in order because I bought my, I got the hotel third party and, you know, they have to go through all the colds and, you know, your cute codes and stuff like that. You just give them your passport and got, got me my room. I paid for everything. And it's been wonderful ever since. It's just the people are here. They're very, very soft. I'm from New York City. I'm from an FU city, <clears throat> period. There's no it's buts. That's just our culture. That's how we talk to each other. That's how we get along with each other. You don't say nothing to me. I don't say nothing to you. And But here is how can I help you? Uh, where would you like to go? Where would you like to see? And of course, I got smart. You know, I got smart on my New York way. I said, oh, you wanted to go to, they asked me if I want to go to the park, to the safari. I said, I just left New York. I could take the A train if I want to go to the zoo. And, that, <laughs> and that's the best zoo in the world. I, I, I can run it from far Rockaway to all the way to the Bronx and, and see every animal in the world. But, you know, you know, that's just me and my, my sick New York mentality. But uh, partying, courtesy, getting along with the money, easy. Everything is easy. All you need is WhatsApp, your credit card, and, and all your dreams. Whatever you want, whatever you want to eat. If you love pizza, please. <laughs> Everywhere you go, they got pizza. Drink crust, every flavor you want. Uh, the food, clean. I didn't have one stomach problem since I've been here. No, everything's clean. You know, I love, of course, I love pizza, fried chicken, and all the stuff that we know in America. But here, 
it's it's definitely definitely got me coming back without a hesitation. You know, I'm coming from drama, arguing with my all the women. You didn't do this. You didn't say that. Oh, you no good. You lying. He ain't dealing with that. Everything is feminine down here. Very soft. No arguing. You just ask, and it all they bring it to you. Let me ask you this. What did people say about what you just said? You told me before you couldn't really tell people back home because they didn't know how to handle it. Can you tell me more about that? Coming from all my life, we're brainwashed. I admit, I own it. I own my nonsense. I own, own all my mistakes. Me owning my nonsense and owning up to that I was brainwashed, it's just, it helps me. It's the truth. The picture that did America shows of Africa, that Africa's all messed up. I went to two of the, two of the shopping malls here that blew me away. Six levels. And they had two concerts for the whole family. Live entertainment, everything. It was beautiful, beautiful, good food, good energy. Nobody bothering you. You say something to somebody, they speak to you. I, everything I've done is just word of mouth since I've been here. Just, I, even it taught me to tone down. I soften up. I'm only talking aggressive now because that's just the emotional side of me, of me being happy. I can't, I can't hide where I'm from. So, I mean, of course, if you, you know, if you're familiar being around the streets or, you know, when you come somewhere, they hear your voice, you know, yes, they'll try to take advantage of you, but it's, it's lightweight. It ain't even nothing to throw you back. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it just comes with the territory. But, you know, I met the brothers here. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. And, you know, if you're a man and you like entertainment and especially party life. You can't, you can't, this town will burn you out. You'll be burnt out. You can't, you can't hit every spot here. It's too many of them. Yeah. And they don't stop seven days a week. They party. They got every liquor, every crap beer, but it's just love. Number love. Not no, if you feel like coming out, you come out. You don't, you don't. But I mean, yes. I mean, like, no, when you tell your family or your friends back home, you're like, hey, you need to go. You need to come try this out. What do they usually say? Oh, they scared. So I'm going home to tell the lie because they don't believe the lie is going to sound like the truth. And then when I tell the truth, it's going to sound like a lie. So I'm using reverse psychology, telling them don't ever go. Everything you see on the news and everything they tell you, but I'm coming back, but I don't want you to go. So yeah. if you see that and if you... I'm 53 years. I don't want no drama. I don't want no problem. I already give 50% of my paycheck to taxes, city taxes, tax tier. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm just want to live free. I'm on borrowed time. You know what I'm saying? I'm on borrowed time. I go to my doctor, got my A1C down. I feel good there. Or, you know, following the brothers out here, they go to the gym. So that's going to motivate me to stretch and, and work harder in the gym. And, you know, being around these ladies, you've got to go to the gym because you, you got a lot of work to put in. you got to put in work. And, um, but, no, nah, I'm telling lies when I get back. So they see me going and they want to know where I'm at. You want to gatekeep it. Yeah, that's it. If you, you know, do what you do, how you do. But me, I'm on ball time. I'm maxing out, baby. Everything God got coming to me and he tell me to go, I'm out. Yeah. Well, let me, you know what I'm I love it. Let me ask you this. What countries have you been to so far? I've been to uh, DR. I've been to Bahamas. I've been to Mexico a couple of times. I left, just left Cabos for my birthday. Um, and I went to Jamaica. But here, the continent? Nah, nah. None of them can meet, man. Nah. This is your first country in Africa. I ain't Africa. never been in the continent day of my life. You know what I mean? I'm still wearing the sneakers I stepped on the ground when I got <laughs> off the plane. And... Um, and I ain't got nothing. I didn't bring nothing. I had to have them wash my clothes in the, in the, in the hotel. Not a problem. Folded it up, brought it back to the room, put it, laid everything out. And um, I can't explain to you. I can't sell it. It sells itself. And for me, I feel embarrassed at 53 years old. It took me this long to come in because now it's like, yo, you missed out on all. And I don't even, wait. this is just one country. They got 54 countries. They got countries that's paradise. 
You know, I, you know, especially your brothers went to Zanzibar and Tanzania, and and I, I'm jealous because I'm like, yo, I'm trying to get there as fast as I can. You know what I mean? You know, uh, the only thing I had to, I could say that was a little bit wavy. I don't want to drive in this city because nah. they scare me. They scare me. They scare me. <laughs> so I, I, I'm going back to my old roots in New York. I would always keep my roots in New York. I, I always keep a, a metro card. I'll take the train, bus, yeah. Uber, Lyft. Now nah, here, you, no, 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 no. You don't want to drive here. That only scares me. And the jet lag. The, the jet lag threw me off because, you know, you know, getting off the plane after 14 hours, I was all woozy. Plus, it's a seven, seven or eight hour difference. Eight hours? Seven. Mm-hmm. It's a seven hour difference. So if it's if it's five o'clock here in, in, in Kenya, it's what, 11 o'clock there. So that will yeah, that, that that's blow the, you away. Because yeah. I'm coming home from the club at five in the morning and it's light outside and it's what? Eleven o'clock in New York, so it's like yeah. that'll 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 throw you off in the, just by itself. But it's not it's nothing. You get over it in a couple of days. But um, brothers, especially if you need permission, no disrespect to the to the married culture <laughs> dudes that you know their girls say they you know they can't go nowhere. Yo, 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 you only got one life to live. When they put you in that ground, that's it, baby. It's over. No, it ain't no shoulda, coulda, woulda. So if you can get out of that, you can get out of that, get your permission slip, come out here for a minute. <laughs> I, I, I highly encourage you, but don't believe me. Just bl- watch my action. Don't watch my words because actions just speaks louder than words. And, you know, I appreciate these brothers. Thank you. Keep making that great content. You got me off the couch. You got me to hit that button on my phone. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know nothing about a visa because I've been, I've been, a, you know, I go to, Mexico, Jamaica, I don't, you don't need none of that. You just, your, your, your passport, go to the airport, screen it, you out. But here, you need a visa. You don't need no, you come here to, to, to Nairobi. You don't need no malaria. You don't need no yellow shots. The mosquitoes ain't even bad out here. I think I got bit once. It was lightweight. I was eating it. I was eating in a, we sure went to a, a boutique hotel and they had the windows open and I got a hit, but it was not, no, no, I didn't feel nothing. It was lightweight. Here is friendly. They give you know they it got issues like everywhere, everywhere you go. Am I gonna be in Brownsville? Am I gonna hang out at East New York? No, I'm from I'm from Longton. I'm from Springfield Gardens. I'm from Rosedale. You gonna catch me over there? You ain't gonna catch me in the hood. Exactly. Same thing. <clears throat> you ain't gonna go where you know you ain't supposed to be. So just use your common sense. There ain't nothing to be scared of. Nothing to be afraid of. Everybody here will greet you. They will help you. Then when you hit the brothers, oh, game over. Game's over. Oh, man. they What? You want to hang out? You can't. You can't even. I became an alcoholic doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is definitely. This, they, they tell you, you, gotta you, know how to they tell you when you get here. You gotta know Listen, this yourself. is a drinking city. You know what I mean? This, they drink. But it's all good because you know your limits. You know who you are. You know me. I, I had a little. I had a hangover day. A hangover young lady here at the cigar lounge helped me bring me back to life. So I appreciate. It. I love her. She's been grateful from the day I came in. And I'm a cigar guy. So wherever I go, anywhere in America, wherever I go, the first thing I do is I find a cigar lounge. That's that's my continental. That's where I find out my information, where to go, who to go, who to see, and. I, I lean on that, and it never, it never, uh, I never went wrong. If I'm in Atlanta, if I'm in D.C., if I'm in, I don't care where I'm at, Chicago, I go to a cigar lounge, and the bros never let me down. <laughs> day one, day one, that's how I got to meet them. They told me, they said, hey, you, also, you want to find them? You got to find them at the Village Market. I went there, and, and I forgot I had to look for the guy. <laughs> hey, I'm sitting there, young lady. She, I, I was had, I had caught the eyes of eating some great Italian food, and I, and I'm sitting there trying to, you know, catch myself because I, I didn't know which way I was going. Sat down, and this young lady, she, she was young, she was nice. She was a real estate agent, and she blew me away, blew me away. I got a little scared because my New York spider senses started going on because she put me in a car and she's driving me around. <laughs> and she's showing me mansions and I'm like, listen, Ma, I don't even belong over here. This is on a whole nother level. They got gates, fences, one crib that she took me to that was bulletproof. 
I'm like, yo, listen, listen. One listen. was underground too, you said. Yeah, one was underground. I got the video of that. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on? Because Tanzania, I mean, I'm sorry, here in Kenya, in Nairobi, they have the United Nations of Africa here. So everybody's here from all over the world. So, you know, safety is the first priority on everything down here. So it's a lot of, you know, radar detectors scanning all your all your, your bags and stuff like that. But that's lightweight. That ain't nothing. That's just in and out. They get you in and out. If you don't go to the mall, say, you just walk right through. But, um, hey, I got to tell a lie. I got to tell a lie when I get They lied and brainwashed me. I'm going back to lie. And br- I, ain't, I ain't got nothing to say. You see me here? You see me come back? Wait, that should be enough for you. Got a gatekeep. There you go. If you man. guys are uh, interested in having the perfect experience here in Nairobi, you want the right network, you want to be added to my group chat, which we're all in together. We always, Phenomenal. that's that's contributing to my alcoholism out here. <laughs> but uh, if you guys want to be added to the community of American men that are out here in Nairobi and you want to have somebody that tells you the perfect place to stay, all the right things to do, click the link in the description or first pin comment and we'll get you a plan set up today and I'll meet you when you get here. Now, uh, that was really good. That was really oh, good. Now, look, that's coming from the heart because I can I'm tell. melting inside, man. I'm, yeah. I'm hating the fact that I got to go back. I hate the fact yeah. that, oh, man. Because then, you know, I'm going to have anxiety on coming back down here. No, hands down. Without a question, I'm coming back. Would I, would I go somewhere else? I don't even know yet. I don't even know. I just I just know in that minute I got to hit the button. But I, I'm not going to say too much. I, I don't want to sell it because, uh, you know, you know how it is. You don't believe me. it. Yeah, you gonna believe me. Yeah, yeah, I'm lying. Uh huh. Everything I just said, I'm lying. <laughs> I'm lying. Yeah, that's the truth. I'm lying. So Scott, you have you you're from South Carolina, right? Not from Miami. Miami. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got you mixed up. Okay, you're from Miami, and this is your second time here. This is my second time here in Nairobi, and my second time here in the continent of Africa. And what did you start in Africa first? So um, I think I've been following you for about two years, and uh, I'm retired military. So um, when I made that plan to retire and then try to choose a um, a second career, I knew once I went into aviation. I knew once I got my license that I wanted to take a long vacation. And initially, I was planning on going to Thailand because I did some research on um, the cheapest places to go live. <laughs> Yeah. And then I think while I was watching your videos, um, you were getting ready to leave Thailand or you just had left Thailand and went to Tanzania. And I liked your experience there. So um, I thought about my social life um, on how that would be in Thailand, um, being a black American and who I'd be hanging out with, who I'd be going out with and stuff like that. And again, so I saw awesome videos and um, I was like, why didn't I think? Of going to Africa first, you know, yeah. why didn't I think of that first? <laughs> so I booked my ticket one week in advance to Tanzania for three months. Um, shared it with my family. Everybody thought I was crazy, worried about my safety and all that stuff, um, which really isn't a problem. You know, um, you can do the research and everything and just go to State Department website and it'll tell you how safe it is in the country. Um, so I did three months in Tanzania last year. Um, while I was there, the itinerary that I had was to have Tanzania as my home base in Dar es Salaam, and then visit Uganda, Rwanda, and Kenya. After a week in Tanzania, I said that uh, I want to stay here the whole time. <laughs> You know, and then after two months there, I said, okay, I'm going to give it a shot to go visit another country. And that's when I went to, um, I came here to Nairobi for a week. Um, And that week here in Nairobi made me choose that this year I was going to spend three months here. Initially, it was going to be six months, but I condensed it down to three months. Um, And that's how I made it back here. Um, The weather is a whole lot better. Um, Compared to Tanzania Well so I'm originally from Miami again And Miami is humid It's warm <clears throat> You know It's mosquitoes um, And you said it in your videos too That um, in Dar es Salaam They have a little bit of issues The roads aren't as developed um, Power outages and stuff like that um, But it was an amazing time But when I came here You know they got the expressway 
you know, the weather, we're right by the equator, it's 75 degrees almost every day. Um, just, just well developed. And if you're in Westlands, um, the way that it was explained to me, it's like, it's like the New York City of Africa almost. Yep. And so, um, so that's how I made it back here. And like I said, I, I plan to be here three months and hopefully I might visit Rwanda and then, um, Mombasa while I'm here to go get the little coast life while I'm here. Well, let me ask you a question. So mm-hmm. you say that this Kenya bought you out compared to Tanzania. Like you mm-hmm. picked Kenya over Tanzania. Mm-hmm. What exactly? So you mentioned the infrastructure. What about your social life and the people here? What What was the difference between the two? Between Tanzania and uh, Kenya? Mm-hmm. Um, well, in both countries, the people are extremely nice. Um, in Tanzania, I spent the time to learn Swahili um, for about a week. And then on my trip here, and I tried to speak Swahili to my cab driver and stuff, they told me, oh, no, you don't have to speak Swahili here. We speak real good English. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the things um, I didn't want to. Um, I didn't mind speaking Swahili because I like to feel close to the culture and everything. Um, but the power outages. <laughs> You know, to have to deal with any of that. Um, and now here, this time, I'm I'm meeting more people. Um, when I went to Tanzania, again, it was just me. I bought my ticket by myself, um, and I'm there alone. Um, yeah, it does feel here, like that. that one yeah. week that I spent last year, I met a couple friends um, that I'm still in contact to and I kept in contact with over the year. And then, uh, you know, my first time meeting Austin and another, the whole network of guys that's here, um, that's traveling and, and, and enjoying this experience. That helped me um, solidify that it's a good place to be. Well, let me ask y'all both a question. So the expats here compared to other countries, do you find that expats in other countries are a little more shady or they're like doing stuff behind each other back and they're kind of out to get you? Like I know when I was in Tanzania or even let's say Colombia, like, you know, they're a little strange. You know, it's kind of like they, they got... You got to watch them, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you compare them compared to the expats in Tanzania? I mean, in uh, Kenya, because I like the expats here more because everybody's just here just to live life. And it's not so much sneak. Like, for example, in Thailand, mm-hmm. I know you've heard about stuff that they got going on there. They fighting behind bar girls and I, I they, they doing the shady videos. stuff behind each other back. Do you find that here, too? <clears throat> Nah, nah, I didn't have no indication, no radars went up. I mean, I'm always on the defense. I'm always one of the people I like to sit back, people watch, watch how they move in body language. It's different here. Like, you go to a club, I'm not trying to go off script because so much time my mind jumped back and forth like a basketball, mm-hmm. but <laughs> you go to a club here, you run up a tab. You don't need no credit card. You don't leave nothing. You just run and they just greet you and says, you know, are you ready to leave? And they give you your bill. Then they'll ask you, you want PayPal, you know, M-Pasa or, or credit card. Or, okay. <clears throat> and it's so weird to me because, you know, clubs in where I'm from is, where's your money at? Where's your money? Where's your money? Where's your card? But here it's different. Even when you go to the bathroom, you're washing your hands before you get your hands out of the sink. The yeah. towel is there waiting for you. Dude, God, he's faster than you. I'm like, oh. And just that alone and moving and getting along, you know, if you're a man and you like, you know, if you got a high nature, you're good here. But if you know you got elements and you know you got, nah, don't come in because you, 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 you know, you know, you know, I ain't want nothing to happen. But it, it's, it's not, you you can't run out of funny. Definitely ain't running out. But with, I mean? with the other expats though, how do you how do you find the other expats here? Like the yeah, other it's, Americans, it's all love. Like everybody, right right here, the bros, right here. The locals told me how to find Austin, and you, I can't hear you. He just was like, "Nah, welcome, man. It's, it's not but love, nothing but love." Bro, here he came, met, we shook hands, broke bread. We still we got everything in common. Every all our talk conversation. It's like uh, walking up the ladder because he gives me more encouragements and, and more energy and more, you know, just to keep yeah. going up. And we all got the same issues, you know what I mean? We just, hey, man, we just tired of the American lot. And 
we hear it and we just feel it. It's just, it's a whole vibe. You know, that's the new word now. It's a vibe here. <laughs> it, 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 yes, it is a vibe. And uh, I won't trade it in for the world. You can, have, you can have everything. You can have my motorcycle. You can have my truck. I don't want none of that no more. You know what I'm saying? I just want to do what I got to do in the States and come back here and just, you know, just let me live my best life. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I've been taxed. And the brothers, nah, they ain't, I ain't, they ain't made not one hesitation here of any foul or phony or nothing. No. Yeah, when it they comes don't to have it. to it. And you don't have to. It's, it's just, we here. Just, yeah. yo, do what we supposed to do and how we do it. I was going to say my experience with the expat community. Um, in Tanzania, um, I didn't really have any um, experience to get from the expat community. Um, yeah. My time's out. Um if I saw any expats, they seemed to be a little older, um, and they just were living their life. They kept to themselves. Um, they would probably recognize me, and you know, if we're at the bar next to each other, and if I initiate conversation and say, "Hey, where are you from?" You know, then maybe we'll have a conversation and stuff like that. So I really didn't have anything or met anyone where I had a relationship that I built with while I was in Tanzania. Um, other countries that I traveled to, um, a lot of those was with the military, so I really didn't get that opportunity to deal with those expats. And then other times in different countries and stuff like that, it was short vacations. Here in Nairobi, um, this time, this year, um, during this first week, um, not only did I reconnect with the friend that I met last year, and he wasn't from the expat community, he's actually Kenyan. Um, but meeting expats through booking that consultation <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and linking up with Austin. Um, the community guys here, man, are real cool. Um, and they go from the ages of mid-20s, um, young 40s. You got my guy over here, I think, in the 50s. Yeah. You yes, know, um, it's a good community of guys that support each other. Um and, and that's open minded. You know, I think if you come here open minded and, and you'll win. You come here open minded, you'll win. I would agree. So if you guys are interested again, thank you for doing the interview today. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Hopefully, just how you saw the video and you decided to book and come to Kenya right away and you loved it. You see that it's not being overhyped. Some people think we just making all this up. I got better shit to do than just sit around and lie. And I and I wouldn't move nowhere that I'm living in a lie either. So, uh, and you booked a consultation, mm -hmm. and because of that, we added you to the expat community out here, and everybody is getting along, we're having a good time. If you want to have that same experience, click the link in the description or the first pinned comment, we'll get on a call today, and we'll set up a plan, and you can live just like these two gentlemen right here, how they're enjoying their time, and it sounds like they don't want to go nowhere else. Well, yeah, I'll be moving here in 2026. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. All right. Will you? I'm going to live here already. I already, man, listen, uh, whatever the paperwork I got to do, visa, this, that, I'll make it work. I'm I'm from New York. It, it ain't nothing. You figure it out, play it out, and it'll work. If I want to work, if I want to make it work, it will work. I'm determined. I'm motivated. If, if it's somewhere that I'm comfortable and I ain't got that, that thing on my shoulder, like, you know, all the craziness we dealing with in New York. This is nothing. You don't even feel no. You don't feel none of that here. You know what I mean? You, you it's cool. We stay. I'm staying in the Westlands. It's cool. Parklands, cool. Good, good infrastructure, lighting. Everything works. Yeah. Everything works. Everything works. It's up to you. You make the next choice. My next choice will be back here. And I got thank you, brothers. I appreciate y'all, man. You know you can reach out to me. Share if I got an idea, you got an idea. If you see me something that's not moving right, just let me know. Yeah, you know what I mean. I got two ears and I and I use them now. You know, and, and you know, thank you for us again. You know, Austin, Brody, just brothers that's putting good content out there that's getting the message across. That is strong. That is big, man. And um. Yo, live your life, man. We we on borrowed time, man. And uh, do what you do. I, I definitely want to do me. Like I said, click the link in the first pinned comment or the description, and we'll get you a call set up today. He did the consultation. He showed up. 
And now we out here. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>